It may be the city of Paris that holds the world's attention now. But watch at the summit it's hosting as more modest cities steal the show. One in particular claims the terrain and the title to lead the march of the mayors. Bristol, home to musical phenomenon Massive Attack, is also the 2015 green capital of Europe. The action is in the cities. The action is not in national governments. We are closer to the issues, we're closer to the answers, and we are saying cities should be playing a part in this. Crucially for Bristol, those answers are growing from the ground up. In the central Millennium Square, the city's ambitions are summed up in the form of a wind-blown solar tree. It's a kind of metaphorical little playful joke, really, because essentially all trees are solar trees. You know. John Packer's steel sapling has leaves made from damaged solar cells rejected by factories in China. They can still use the sun, though, to make enough power to charge your phone and free Wi-Fi. The idea is that passers-by see it and they get it instantly because it's, it's very difficult to communicate issues around energy conservation. So has a seed been planted? Is the conservation message getting through in Bristol? As long as we still see four by fours being driven five miles to work every day by able-bodied people, you know, the message hasn't really got through. Like most cities, Bristol still puts up with the downsides of car-driven daily life. It's even referred to as the UK's most congested city, despite many efforts to change that. So how can such a city still end up with the title of Europe's green capital? Partly because the title rewards potential. And partly because of a determined mayor armed with a bicycle, red trousers, and a sense of fun. Hello. <laughs> I just made it a rule. Throw away all suit trousers and only have red trousers. I cycle all the time. I sold my car. I think you have to lead by example. And I find it liberating. I think it's got to be carrot and stick and also uh, working with the bus companies to reduce the, uh, to, to, re to have fair affairs and increasing our cycle infrastructure. Some of the work did come before him, long before the Pope's invitation to join world mayors for a talk on climate change. The park we met in for one used to be a busy intersection. But more recently, the number of cyclists is rising and the emissions are dropping. Bristol is also now in an alliance of cities promising to drastically reduce emissions by amounts that would make many national governments blush. The biggest challenge that we have is transport. Uh, we're a historic, complex city. You can't knock it down in order to make new transport routes so that we have to be clever. Enter what they like to call here the Poo Bus. It's become a, a Bristolian thing. Everybody knows what the Poo Bus is. Um, Nothing subtle about the name and no ambiguity about the source of the fuel. The company's put in a request to buy 110 buses like this. Driving this bus feel any different than driving any other bus? Yes, it's a lot smoother, it's quicker, and it's awfully pleasant to drive. All the drivers love it. Our objective was to make a difference to the way we looked at waste. Powering the prototype is a byproduct of what a million people flush down the toilet treated, then turned into fertilizer, even a coolant, and enough methane to power many buses. All a feat that's clinched the company many accolades. When you compare the um, environmental credentials of uh, biomethane powered bus uh, to diesel powered buses, um, the statistics are quite incredible. It's um, not only significantly improving the environment, it's also being derived from uh, a non-fossil fuel which makes it very, very sustainable. 
The city also tries to encourage everyday green acts, even handing out medals. Here's your medal! But of all the ideas Bristol plans to share in Paris, the most successful, says the mayor, has been putting people in the proverbial driver's seat. There's something different when people take ownership of their places and their environments. Oh, sorry, little guy. Alice Marie Archer's fish project is another perfect symbol of Bristol's ambition. She wants a warehouse-sized version of the mini system she set up at a local cafe. The farm will produce both fish and vegetables that will grow on the fish waste. The fish are putting their waste into the water. The nitrates are really valuable for the plants to grow. Yeah, I want people to just think that food production is a meaningful livelihood that's not impoverished. Urban farming is quite in fashion at the moment though, so a lot of people want to do it, but to make it actually possible to help them with all the different skills that they need, still they need help, everybody does. So this, these are our new friends for the cafe. Barley, you're not to eat them while we're doing this, right? So maybe it's just not 600,000 people suddenly become enlightened, it's just you know that growing slowly from underneath. There is a laboratory feel about Bristol, but also a sense its role in Paris as host of the world cities will be pivotal. It's going to be a real test of the resolve of nations, and we've got to do it. If we don't do it, I think we will have been judged really badly by the future, and um, I don't want to be... I don't want to be part of that failure. I'm absolutely determined that the cities keep the pressure up on the national delegations to come to a good agreement. Paris may go down in history as the capital of the fight against climate change. Bristol, however, and Vancouver and Oslo and many others could be remembered as the change makers. Nala Ayed, CBC News, Bristol.